This is a KGUN 9 On Your Side news update. Officials say American guns were used in the murder of the American family in Mexico and that it could be a, mis a case of mistaken identity by drug traffickers. Their surviving children are being treated in Tucson. Their injuries range from moderate to critical, including a seventh-month-old baby who was shot in the chest. When Mexican officials arrived at the scene, they reported 200 shell casings, a scorched car, and two other bullet-ridden vehicles. One person died when a trench collapsed in Midtown Tuesday, and now OSHA is investigating. The whole thing happened uh, on Stone, just south of River. A trench collapsed at a construction site there. Tucson Police, Tucson Fire and Northwest Fire all responded. Two firefighters were hurt but are expected to be okay. It's projected a majority of Tucson voters chose Regina Romero to be the new mayor. Now it's time for her to start turning campaign issues into achievements. Romero says voters liked her record from 12 years on city council. She says she'll work to strengthen alliances to keep improved streets and public safety and work towards helping Tucson cope with climate change. Well, President Donald Trump has announced his intent to nominate two judges from Pima County to serve on the U.S. District Court. The latest nominee is Judge John Hinderaker. Right now, he's serving as a judge on the Arizona Superior Court for Pima County. The other nominee is Judge jo Scott Rash. Rash is also a judge on the Arizona Superior Court in Pima County as well. Safety changes are coming to Sentinel Peak. It's all part of a six month pilot program. The mayor and city council members approved it back in September. Those changes will begin Veterans Day. That's Monday. Mondays will become vehicle free days. The vehicle gate will be open Tuesday through Sunday, but only after 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, in 2017, Tucson voters approved a one cent tax to every $10 to expand Reed Park. After hearing input from the community, the Tucson Parks and Rec Department and the Reed Park Zoo have a plan for the next decade. Nine on your sides, Veronica Vernaccio joining us live to show us what that plan is going to look like. Veronica, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, it's starting in the park, but then the really big expansion is happening here at the Reed Park Zoo. It's going to be three phases over 10 years. That first phase is here in Asia. It's actually going to have a big part of it with one of their most popular exhibits. That's over here with the tigers. Uh, looks like the tigers are no longer around. They were actually just right over there. This is actually going to be part of another big expansion with Asia. That means redoing the front entrance. That also means going to add more animals like a red panda, Sloth Bear, Komodo Dragon, as well as moving the flamingos to the front of the zoo. And this is all going to be really just to continue educating the public more about these endangered species. And if you'd like to add any more input when it comes to the changes that are happening at the zoo, they're going to be holding an open house, and that's going to be next Tuesday. So if you'd like to attend, all that information is on our website, kega9.com. But back to you guys in the studio. All right. April. Is it going to be a nice day to be at the zoo or just about anything? Yeah, really. Whether you're going to play a little golf, maybe a hike, heading over to the zoo. It's a little chilly out there right now. You might need the jacket or the extra layer. We're at 54 degrees. It's going to warm up nicely, though. That system that brought us at least a little bit of rain yesterday is not a cold one. So we're expecting to warm right back into the low 80s, at least for today and into the weekend. Now, next week, we'll start seeing those 70s by Tuesday and Wednesday.